Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton. This is going to be the full rookie walkthrough for the summer major tournament. So if you've noticed on my channel earlier today, I released whole by whole content. The reason that I did that is because this was my very first time touching this course whatsoever. We were on vacation out of the country last week. Very, very limited Wi-Fi. Only had Wi-Fi about every, you know, four days. So um, I didn't get a chance to practice at all. So this morning, I used a lot of practice tokens on Ricky. I was able to find a lot of drops. I did them hole by hole because I knew people were excited to start playing the major tournament. Um, but for everybody who likes a full walkthrough in one video, this is for you. But again, if you're looking for a particular hole and you need a frame of reference, the good news is they're all on my channel. They're in a playlist section titled Golf Clash summer major rookie qualifying hole by hole walkthrough it's in a whole playlist of its own you can find every single individual hole all right let's go hole number one we're going to show you here uh the drive and the biggest thing about this drive is we want to get up on up as high on the fairway as we can but we want to favor the right hand side of the fairway so you see that sand trap up there by the water we want to get beyond that but to the right hand side um, because that's going to give us the most consistent shot for shot number two. If you hit a bad great left or you get two left on the fairway, you still have your chance for eagle, but you're going to get a glitchy ball guideline. If you want to know more detail on that, please check out the whole number one video that I did earlier today in its separate video, because I'm not going to go through everything here as... I want to keep this video moving along, right? But I am going to show you the drop. And the nice part about this is when you get to this part of the fairway like I did, this ball guideline is going to be 100% consistent and the ball is going to play true. Okay, I know that because I made this on both of these accounts. Now, um, on my other accounts, my new rookie accounts that I'm building, if you've been following along, I am playing the tournament on this one. Those accounts got more to the left-hand side of the fairway and the ball can, the ball guideline is very, very glitchy. Even though it's the same type of shot, it's very glitchy, okay? But again, for more detail, check out my video earlier today. But there's hole number one, a very, very good chance for the eagle on this one. This is going to bring us into hole number two. Hole number two, I want you to play this shot 5% at minimum distance of our club. I know that we're not at minimum of our sniper, but that how that is how this hole is playing very, very consistently. I put this one out earlier today, and I already have eight people hit me up on uh, Facebook Messenger letting me know that they were able to drop the hole in one 5% at minimum. It's always easier if you talk to me just to hit me up on the YouTube comments as those things do ding on my phone. Um, whereas at Facebook Messenger, I just get so many and overran with messages, sometimes I miss them. So just keep that in mind. But thank you for all the people who let me know they were able to get this one to go down as well. That's very good to hear that feedback. Please put those in the comments, though, so other people know that shot is playing very well. All right. That's the best thing to do. Put it in the comments so people know that that's a consistent shot. Here we go. Shot number three. Uh, hole number three, I should say. This is going to be a no, no elevation adjustment for me. I'm going to go with full top, one bar of side spin to the left. And I'm going to put a little bit of my red ring in the rough, as you can see right there. From here, I'm just taking a normal shot. I'm not going to mess around with the OP because the thing that you don't want to do is you don't accidentally want to drive the rough. Here, we just want to make sure that we're landing on the fairway very nicely. Again, you know, getting higher up on the fairway, sure, that might be nice, but we don't have to gamble with our drive in order to do that. And then we're going to play this shot right here, which is going to be played minus 10% at mid that's what I want you to play it. That's not what you're seeing here, but we are going to play this one minus 10% at mid distance. Okay. So here we go. So you see the shot getting set up. 
For me, I did not play it at the elevation that I am suggesting that you play it. But here I just missed to the right hand side. And I do believe if I would have played this one minus 10%, then that ball would have been in the hole for the albatross. Very, very good chance for an albatross there. This is a course where there's a ton of drops available. Here we're going to go with a katana on hole number four. Three bars of side spin to the left combined with two bars of top spin. My landing position is going to be just like this. A little bit of my red ring in the rough up top, as you can see. And it looks like my blue ring down there is, is touching the bottom part of the rough. So that's the part of the fairway that I'm aiming on to go from fairway to fairway. Here we hit another perfect ball. And we land very nicely, 335. This is a great distance. We're going to go 0% at mid for shot number two. 0% at mid for shot number two. Keep in mind here, I am using the runner. So you're going to want to make sure you note that and you put that in your bag before you move on to this hole. You can see the top spin that I'm going with here. I'm going with enough top spin that my ball guideline is going through the hole. And notice my position here, most of my, I would say half my yellow ring in the rough, half of it on the fairway. You can get a good frame of that right there. Now here we hit a perfect ball, and this one stinks that it doesn't drop, right? This one, we get that nice little roll around, <laughs> and we barely miss. So when that one comes in, we miss to the left-hand side. So let's take a look at the setup. Setup, we're going dead center. All we want to do to correct this is move this over to the right just a smidge, okay? Because as we hit the ball here with a perfect shot, we miss to the left. We almost get it to drop, but if we had moved that target over a little bit to the right, we would be good. Hole number five is 0% at mid. So I'm using a Viper here. I'm going to show you this sniper shot as well. But, um, you know, the funny thing is I hit this both times with the Viper, but didn't drop it with the sniper. Here I'm using about one and a half bars of topspin. You kind of see the setup point here with a green ring almost at the rough line. Perfect ball. And that ball drops into the hole. It does come in a little fast. But like I said, two for two <laughs> with the Viper there. Well, I mean, I dropped it twice with the Viper. Um, some of them, you know, one of them was in practice. But here's a sniper. is going to be played 5% at mid. So the elevation plays a little bit differently. Top spin a little bit different. Now, this is 3.1 mile per hour wind. If you have higher wind, 3.6 or above, you're going to want to go with a little bit more top spin. Now take a look at where we're aiming here. This one's a little bit different on my setup. I've got the yellow ring on the rough line this time. Ball guide line going through the hole, dead center. Perfect shot. And for me, I just could not get this one to fall with the sniper. Very, very, very close. I would suggest you play it at the 5% like I suggested, and I think you're going to be able to sneak that one in there, okay? Hole number six. This one to me was the toughest of the par fives so far. Um, hole number nine can be tough depending on how you play it, but, you know, I got an albatross on it. But So this one I think is a little bit tougher. You know, we're going to go with the extra mile, and we're going to go with the Titan. You're going to notice here, Quite a bit of OP with a little bit of curl to the left. All we're looking to do is hit this fairway and go up to the second fairway. Very nicely there. If you have an extra mile eight, if you have an extra mile nine, you know, you're going to be in a better position than this extra mile seven. Now we're going to be playing with the big dog here. Now, if you get more, more distance on your drive and you get more to the right hand side of the fairway, you're actually going to be able to attack this pin straight at it with a with a heavy back spin with the big dog. If you're using a power four or power five ball, you could attack the pin with a really good drive with a sniper and get yourself a possibility for an albatross, which will be tough, 
but it would be there with the right type of drive and ball combo. But, you know, for the majority of viewer purposes, we're going to go with the big dog. We're going to go with the Titan. I just didn't get enough on the drive to attack the pin. So for me, I'm going to have to go with some backspin and some heavy curl and just try to land this one on the green, which is exactly what we do. Now, I curl until the left side of my ball is touching the inside of the adjustment target. And it was just a little bit too much curl, but we actually love the speed. The speed is great. If we take a little bit of curl off there, who knows what could happen, but I'm going to take that eagle on hole number six and just run to hole number seven. Hole number seven, I do pick up the um, the eagle on this one, though, and albeit it is a little bit tougher. Now, it's a major, so we're going to go bombs away here. Why not? Why not gamble a little bit, even in the qualifying round, to pick up the best score that we can for tie-breaking purposes? You're going to see a lot of people um, you know, use quite a bit of money balls and things like that in the major tournaments just to try to get a major banner under their belt. So we got to be ready for that. Always save your good balls for tournaments. You know, these berserkers, you know, sometimes we use a lot of them in rookie and pro just depending on the wind angles. And this one does give us a good chance if you have like an extra mile six or seven. I'm going to show you another drive though, so just be patient. I'll show you another way to play it. Here we go, 10% at mid. The biggest thing here is you're going to notice the backspin. This is like 5.8 bars of backspin. Be careful not to go full backspin. The biggest thing you want to watch here is that this ball is actually bouncing into the hole. That's what I want. I want the ball bouncing into the hole. And then we make our elevation pull here. So we make our wind adjustment. And, you know, these are tough shots to make, especially when you're using a backbone with almost max backspin. It's a very long shot, but we do get that one to sneak in for the eagle. Hopefully we get that in the final round. I'd rather have it then than now, but, you know, we'll take it whenever we get it. Now, if you're playing with better clubs like this, extra mile eight, you can make it here, no problem. Now, the thing about this one is I'm not using any elevation. I'm just simply using this, this bush as my landing spot. So you see this bush right here? I'm playing, when I stretch out to max, I'm just playing in the middle of the bush just like that. So when I stretch out to max, that's what I'm looking for. And then I go full OP, a little bit of curl to the right, and we just let this baby rip. Now, you can see here, extra mile eight, kingmaker, we have no problem landing in the same area, and then that's just going to leave shot number two the same, but it's going to lower the wind mile per hour, which is really nice because that's a wind resistance three ball compared to a wind resistance one berserker. Hole number eight, we are going to be going with a no spin. Now, this one was not consistent for me. I actually was able to get 3.7 mile per hour wind on two different attempts. I make this one but I missed the other one by a, a hair to the right. It did the same 360 roll around the cup as you saw me do earlier on a different hole. 20% at mid, no spin. Yellow ring on the rough, ball guideline going through the hole. Uh, here's the setup. The only thing that I want you to do is, is move this over. I mean, just a smidge to the left. It's going to be hard getting it right, but I want your ball guideline through the hole just like that, but I want you to offset just a fraction to the left-hand side, okay? Now here, we're making our elevation pull. I hit a perfect ball. Now you're gonna see this one go into the hole, which is always nice, but it drops on the right-hand side. That, okay, it doesn't even touch the flag stick. On my other account, it rolled around the cup on the right hand side with the exact same wind. That's why I want you to move the target over just a fraction to the left. We're just trying to even that ball more towards the middle of the pin. Hole number nine, this is it. Hole number nine, you're gonna see me mess around because I didn't even practice this hole. I don't practice most par fives. I just go right at them. So full top, two left, kingmaker. I'm trying to see if I can make it from fairway to fairway, even in the headwind, which is why I'm using a kingmaker. Now, yes, obviously, if you were to use a power four or power five ball with some good wind resistance, you'd be better off. Um, I did like the extra mile shot over the big topper, although I do believe you might be able to make it with a big topper as well. But I cannot confirm that because I did not try. 
So if anybody is trying this out with the big topper, if you're able to make it easily, then let people know in comments. I do albatross this hole. As you can see here, I hit a perfect ball, which means I just get all of this drive, which is great. We go from fairway to fairway, and we get a nice little rollout there, okay? If you don't clip the rough, you're going to get an even better rollout, which is nice. Hey, this is going to be the albatross shot, but before we do that, I am very, very close to 5,000 subscribers. I can't even believe I'm saying that. That is so awesome. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribes and watches. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. And then secondly, please hit the thumbs up before you leave the video if you found this helpful. Here I'm going to go with, it's about 1, 2, 3, 4.8 bars of backspin. Four point eight bars. Four point eight bars of backspin. Ball guideline going through the hole. Here, I was just testing the green to see if there's any glitch spots. I don't find any. Um, normally, you don't see me do that. Normally, that's what I do when I practice. But here, you're getting to see me practicing in real mode <laughs> for the most part. Um, and here, I just make my pull. You know, I play both shots at zero percent. The drive is zero percent at max. This is zero percent at mid. And it's always nice to pick up the albatross, you know. This ball goes in, it's dead center, and that is it for the rookie qualifying round. I'm going to play pro a little bit later, and then I will see you in the next round. Thanks, everyone.